The biggest impact on stormwater runoff is impervious surfaces like this parking lot. All of the water that hits this surface during a storm event actually runs off and has to be managed downstream somewhere in a stormwater basin or some other retention area. We have alternative ways to deal with that though with pervious surfaces, allowing some of that water to actually infiltrate back into the ground where it was before the parking lot. So we're going to show you some of those different designs, different types of materials. So instead of impervious surfaces, now we have lots of different types of permeable materials. This is just one example. This is a paver stone that's been made out of aggregate material that's held together by resin. And I'm just going to show you an example how much water it can take and how quickly it infiltrates. This of course is going a lot far, faster than rainfall, but you can see how the water is going right through that pervious surface and comes out the bottom. And that's actually one of the key aspects of the design of permeable surfaces. It's not just creating a pervious surface here, but we also have to create a reservoir underneath this surface to capture that water, at least temporarily during a storm, and then allow it to infiltrate. So one of the designs behind these pervious materials is to create a reservoir with larger aggregate material. This is 57 stone and actually is underneath this pervious asphalt material about six inches deep. So when the rain comes, infiltrates quickly through the surface, is stored temporarily in this reservoir, and then it is allowed to infiltrate into the natural soils underneath that are um, not too compacted during this construction process. So this is pervious asphalt. It's another type of permeable material, not often used in Florida, especially in areas where there's a lot of traffic because the heat in Florida can cause that to deform a little bit. More likely you'd use pervious concrete. This is an example of pervious concrete. In most instances, the only thing that changes with this material is they remove the sand. They remove the finer aggregate material. So you just have the larger um, rock material and the binder, which in this case is cement. So this is another example of a pervious material that can be used to help infiltrate some of that stormwater. Again, here's the impervious asphalt surface over here, which is very important for driving. But over here, where there's parking happening, we actually have this sort of a, a snowflake block where it's concrete that's impervious, about 60%. But then there's these openings, these voids that are backfilled with sand, and that's where the water can infiltrate during a storm. This snowflake blocks actually helps to distribute the weight of the car as well so that the soils underneath are not getting compacted and it maintains that infiltration capacity. Because that's still loose soil, this grass can actually come up in between and starts to create a different character than some of the other sorts of pervious materials. So this is another type of pervious material. It's actually made out of recycled tire crumb. It's bound together by a resin. Um, but it's a little different than the previous example we had. This one really doesn't require an underlayment or any sort of reservoir underneath. And because it's bound together, it can almost be laid on like a carpet. And it doesn't require a lot of site prep. It's very um, flexible with regards to roots and things. And that's one of the reasons it was applied here on the University of Florida campus in one of the conservation areas. So that there wasn't a lot of site prep required. It was able to be laid down. It's very compatible with a lot of the roots a lot of the natural area um, that this particular application requires. The other reason we put this pervious material in here is to minimize the erosion that was occurring. This pathway here had a lot of water and sediments that were coming down before that pavement was applied. And that water would end up in this creek with a lot of sediment and a lot of contamination. By applying the pervious material, we reduced that runoff, we minimized the amount of particulate load that was coming into the creek, and now this water flows a lot clearer with a lot less sediment. And that's the real objective behind low impact development, trying to deal with source control, minimize the runoff, minimize the pollutants, so we protect the rivers, the lakes, and the ocean, ultimately, as well as our groundwater. If you're interested in this pervious material, contact me, Mark Clark, at the Soil and Water Science Department, University of Florida.